John Schneider's coming back, right? If you were to bet, if you were, a, I know you don't have a crystal ball here, Ben, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'd be shocked, honestly, at this point, if John Schneider's not back. Um, despite the, I mean, the nightmare kind of unfolding in front. I mean, and then also looks at, across the way, Rob Thompson, the, the Phillies manager, yeah. wins a wild card series and then is handed immediately a two year extension. Two year deal, yeah. Yeah, and the interim tag stripped from him. But I thought, yeah, I did. I agree with all the decisions John Schneider made in game two. Like, obviously not. And I've been over that a little bit, but I thought the way he explained them and the accountability expressed post game was refreshing and, and good. And obviously this team responded to him and seemed like a different team uh, under him than Charlie Montoyo. And you heard player after player after player to go to the wall and defending him and, and talking mm-hmm. about how he had a, a sense of the room and team kind of gelled under him and i mean there's another it has to be said that there's another factor that if you are ross atkins and mark shapiro and you go about now firing two managers and i understand yeah john schneider probably i I mean the way ross atkins was talking about him a couple of weeks ago called him a long-term fit but that i i assume that meant if he's not the manager it's back to bench coach and still within the organization but that's i think most people would view that as couple of managers going through in a brief period of time, you do start to focus the, uh, the microscope on yourself a little bit more. So for for a multitude of different reasons, I think John Schneider's back next season. You touched on, on Rod Thompson getting the uh, Rob Thompson, I should say, getting the two year deal with the Phillies Canadian boy. Uh, Having a Canadian at the helm of a major league team. That's a pretty big deal for baseball Canada, right? I think so. Yeah. Why, why not? Um, it, it, it can't hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Canadians, Canadians in, in major league baseball, it's a great thing. I mean, we, we've, we've seen so many successful ones over the years and, and yeah, well, we've got some, some still in action in postseason play and Josh Naylor out in, in Cleveland and yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> All right, I want to talk um, Alex Anthopoulos really quickly. He's such an enigma. I can't think of a general manager in sport, forget about baseball, that a fan base has literally heralded as a hero quite like he endeared himself to Toronto Blue Jays fans in 2015. Like, fans don't cheer on general managers. Let's be serious. And... He walked away at a beautiful time, you know, like managed to get behind the helm of the Atlanta Braves at a great time, inherited a young upcoming team. He's made them better. He's locked in the core. Uh, Do you think that there's anything that this Shapiro Atkins group can do to ever endear themselves like that, even winning? Or has it gone on to the point where it's just like Anthopolis will always be the golden child because he got out at the right time? Yeah, I think if they win a World Series, they'll they'll supersede <laughs> Yeah, them. right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what, I mean, it's amazing how the narrative shifted in such a short period of time, right? I mean, they were, they did lead this team to a, a postseason berth and an ALCS berth in, in 2016. Um, but of course, yeah, so much of the work had already been done by Alex Anthopoulos. That was not mm-hmm. a team that had the Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins stamp on it. And then spent a couple of years in the wilderness, like this team in a bizarro 2020 year made the playoffs after what, two, three years totally in the wilderness and, (laughs) and not, and not, and not being able to, to do the rebuild that they probably wanted to do immediately after 2015. And, and I know it, it, it's hard to, to be super optimistic as a blue Jays fan after what happened on Saturday. But I mean, look at this core. And, and how young they are and how perilously few key pieces of this team are likely to depart this off season. Um, we'll see, I, I guess um, in the next couple of years, whether they, they take advantage of this window of contention, but there's no debate that a window of contention has been created in yeah. like a relatively short amount of time. And I think 
even but the, ben the what about the saying what about the saying dynasties are built in a day <laughs> yes that's yeah i think it's not that but yeah um <laughs> yeah i i yeah you just i mean that's the the the, the cure-all for all of this how do you forget blowing a seven run lead how do you endear yourself to a fan base more than the previous guy who had a little bit of success but once and remember going into 2015 Alex Anthopoulos was likely to be fired if he, mm -hmm. he wasn't able to turn that team into a playoff contender. And then, yeah, obviously in an act of desperation that ended up working out and, and nobody really has come back to haunt you, traded a lot of, of future pieces for now pieces. And good thing he did because, yeah, it, it reawoke, it, uh, it reawakened it really uh, did. A, a dormant fan base in, in the city that had been asleep for about 20 years. But no, it, if this team wins... Yeah, it, it, it'll be... All's forgiven. A hundred percent. We lost in devastating fashion, but had we won the series, we almost almost certainly weren't getting past the Astros. This team is not as close as we would like to be. Young, The young core is great, but there are still additions that need to come, right? Like what, what kind of urgency should this front office feel this offseason? Or do you think it is just more of a a couple tweaks here and there kind of an off season. Well, yeah, they should feel a lot of urgency because we've seen, you know, in the, in, in the building across the street that the Toronto Maple Leafs thought this window of contention would last forever and the winning would never cease. And it hasn't yet really started. So you may think you have forever to, to take multiple kicks at the can and that doesn't necessarily work out. But I, I disagree with the premise that they would like, you know, okay, that they had no chance to win the World Series or that they were going to get pounded into sand by the Houston Astros. I mean, the Seattle Mariners could easily win that series. That's the nature of playoff baseball, right? And I think one of the secondary lessons out of this wild card round and the, and the two-game series loss to the Mariners is that you'd like to avoid it, if at all possible, that you should really yeah. win the division. Yes. Yeah. You should think, I mean, that's, that's because clearly the incentive to be the top wild card when three of the four home teams in the wild card round lose, I guess it's hard to really convince yourself that that's as important as maybe we convinced ourselves by the end of the regular season going into next year. What is important. And there's just no debate that giving yourself, Hey, listen, the playoffs are always going to be a small sample and not representative of, of the, of, the large sample that 162 games is, but five is a little bit more representative than three. And if you can assure yourselves of a DS appearance, you need to do that. And this team, the way it played the last month and a half, two months was worthy of, of competing atop the division. The Yankees got off to an insane lead and the Blue Jays didn't really start playing their game until, yeah, with a couple of months into, you know, middle of August, uh, and then September, and then the first few days of October. Now that you need to think about winning um, the division next season to to avoid all this wild card. Nonsense. Do you think this team is close though, with John Schneider at the helm, without the Yankees hopefully getting off to a historic pace? Do you think this team, as it stands today, is a couple minor tweaks away from winning the division next year? They won 92 games. Yeah. <laughs> they, fin they finished with like one of the best offenses in major league baseball. They, I mean, by I, just about every metric there, yeah. I mean, they have one of the best one, two punches any rotation in baseball is going to have now. And they had one of the best closers in major league baseball beyond him. Okay. Yeah. You can quibble with the bullpen, obviously. Yeah. Am I going to tell you that the, they're, you know, roster for roster better than the Astros. Probably not. Astros are the best record in the American League. It also should be said that they got to play the Oakland A's 19 times. They got to play the Angels 19 mm -hmm. times. Like there's, and what's happening next year is a, a schedule, baby. <laughs> well, yeah, closer to balance, not fully balanced. You still play your division more than the other teams um, in your league, but you also do play all 30 teams, at least one series. Yeah. It's not like every other, it's not like other sports, I should say, where, you know, you can, it's, 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 it's clear that, I don't know if the, if the giants make the playoffs 
in the NFC that that team's not going to win a world or not going to win a Super Bowl this year. If you're good enough to make the playoffs, any team can can win in the postseason. We saw a, an Atlanta Braves team that was not nearly as good as this one this year mm-hmm. make some additions at the deadline for guys that were just guys in the outfield who certainly weren't Ronald Acuna Jr. Beat the 110 win Dodgers mm-hmm. and win the World Series. Is this team good enough to win the World Series? Of course. Yeah, just get into the postseason. But yeah, you got to give yourself the best chance once you get there to win. And I think you look historically at the teams that do well at this time of year. It's teams that have great offenses, which the Blue Jays do. Uh, a, a great top end of the rotation and and swing and miss stuff out of the back end of the bullpen. Blue Jays have a lot of that. They don't have the last thing in an abundance like the, some of these other teams do. We really appreciate all of you within the walk-off community. This thing continues to grow and become an animal of its own. It's a little bit overwhelming, but honestly, we love talking Blue Jays baseball and all the interaction that you folks are involved with us. Thank you so much. Discord, feel free to join it. That is always free. The show, or, uh, the link is in the show notes. You can follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube currently and you're not subscribed, We'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. All the best, everybody. Cheers.